Hi quilting friends, it's Stuart Hillard here with Clover and a great project for you, plus a load of innovative products from Clover. You know, I love a small project. It's quick to make, it uses up my scraps, and if I can make it useful as well, well, it's win-win for me. Now, I'm gonna show you a great project today, and it's for my humbug pouch. This is super useful, little fun pouch. It's just straight sewing, um, and it's a great little project for keeping things like your Clover Wonder Clips so that you've always got them on hand for when you're doing your sewing. It's an easy sew, it's quick to make, and you're going to enjoy it, I'm sure. Now, the first thing that you're going to need are some fabrics, and you want to use your favourite kind of fabrics. I love florals, and I like to mix them with some solids. So I've got those fabrics here. You're also going to need some inner form, a fusible foam, or you could use quilt batting and a medium weight stabiliser inside your humbug pouch too, just to give it some stiffness. But inner form or a fusible foam is a really great alternative. So I've got some fabrics here. Um, I need to do just a little bit of cutting. So I've got my Clover patchwork board. It's a great multifunctional tool, this, because within one board, you've got a pressing surface, you've got um, a sandpaper board for doing things like drawing um, your lines for half square triangles on. You've got this anti-slip mat so that when you're using the ironing function you can put this down on the table and it stops your board slipping and sliding around. And then you've also got a cutting mat and it's the cutting mat I want right now. So I've got my fabric right here and I've also got my rotary cutter. So the first thing that I'm going to do is straighten up the edge on my fabric. Okay, so you need to cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips. This is a pieced outside for my bag. Um, so you're going to need to cut some strips of a floral, in my case, and you're also going to need some strips of a plane. And we're going to start by sewing them together. I'm going to create a nine patch. And I'm strip piecing it for speed. So let's grab one more strip of floral. Now at this stage, so long as you keep your edges lined up, there's really no need to pin. We are going to trim these down, but make sure you're using a nice accurate quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now I've got my strips all sewn together, my three strips, but I need to make sure that the back is nice and flat. And I've become a huge fan of pressing seams open. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going back to my patchwork board and I'm also going to use my seam roller. Now this is a fantastic tool from Clover. It's really comfortable in your hand. It has this little wheel at the front and it's just perfect for flattening seams and getting your patchwork really flat. So what I'm going to do on the back of my patchwork, I've got this laying down flat now and I'm just going to use my thumb and finger just to open up the very first part of the patchwork and you can just see that right there and I'm just going to roll it along that seam and what this is doing is it's pushing out the fabric really flat and I can just run along. I'll do exactly the same on this other side so just start with your nail and just push down the very end once I've done that, I am just going to go over the surface with my iron and again using my patchwork board. Such a fantastic tool. Great if your space is limited and you don't have much room next to you when you sew. I seem to do most of my sewing on the kitchen table. So, and that is so, so flat. And the trick to that is using that seam roller and pressing your seams open. It just makes for a really, really perfect flat finish. So once you've made your first set, you need to make a second set. This time I'm going to use two of my plain and one of my floral strips. I'm piecing this, but of course, if you preferred, you could make the front and back of your humbug pouch using plain fabric, just a solid piece of fabric. And if you were doing that, 
you just need to cut a couple of six and a half inch squares. Okay, that's my strip piecing done. And I'll just do a last quick roller of those seams. Okay, there we go. That's the last seam done. And then I can just flip that over and give it a quick press. Okay, so I've got my two strip sets and I can cut these down now to make my nine patch. So again, back to my patchwork board. And what I need to trim here are three two and a half inch segments. And I'm just gonna go straight to cutting. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna use the sandpaper surface, which although it's great for gripping fabric when you're marking it, is also really useful for when you're laying out your patchwork pieces ready to put together into a block because your fabric will stick to the sandpaper finish. Now I do want some pins this time. So I'm gonna grab my very, very handy Clover magnetic pin case. So this is magnetic. It means that my pins are just gonna stick to it. I just love that, it's like a magic trick. So I'm gonna pin these together. Now I've got Clover flower head pins um, and they are absolutely wonderful. I think when I very first started doing patchwork a uh, college course, everybody had clover flower head pins and I think they really are the quilter's favourite. They are really fine. They have that lovely flat head and I just want to show you how I've pinned that too. Um, I've pinned in the direction of the seam that I'm going to sew and you'll also notice that because the pins are flat, there isn't a horrible big kind of bump um, when I'm sewing. I'm gonna take the pins out, of course, before I get to them, but there isn't a bump that's gonna get in the way when I'm sewing. So let's run this through the machine. Okay, we'll go to the last section. Pin that together. And I'm, when I'm pinning my nine patch, I'm not trying to pin through the intersection. I know that a lot of people when they make patchwork would try and push a pin right here, right in this intersection here, but that actually can end up distorting your patchwork and spoiling your piecing. So what I prefer to do is line those pieces up and then I'll just pin around the area that I want to stick together. Okay, let's just stitch that up. And of course you can use these pins pinned in vertically as well and that flat flower head gives you a great surface just to grab onto and pull out as you get to the pin. So I've made one, I'm going to quickly run through my second set here as well. So I'm doing a little bit of chain piecing to save thread. Okay, grand. Now I use my thread cutter on my machine a lot, but I've got a great pair of clover scissors here where I can just snip any little intersections that I need to. I've got my first nine patch. I do need to give it a quick press. And again, I'm going to use my seam roller for this. And what you end up with because you've got those seams pressed open is something which is absolutely paper flat. Now, my next stage, once I've created those pieces of patchwork, is to fix these to my fusible foam. Using my patchwork board, I'm going to lay my piece of patchwork on top against the fusible side and then just working from the centre out, I'm just going to fuse my patchwork straight onto that fusible foam. I've got some finished ones here that I've already done and I've cross-hatched these. Really simple to do, but of course this only looks wonderful if we've got nice straight lines, so we need to mark those first. My preference is to create a mark that doesn't need removing and my favourite tool for doing that is a clover hero marker. You could say it's my hero marker. I absolutely love it. It's so easy to use. It's a little bit like um, what we might call a, a 
bone folder, um, which you can use for paper crafting as well. And it's got a curved edge on it, and this curved edge right here it feels really quite sort of um, sharp and finely turned, and you're going to use that to mark your fabric. So simply lay a ruler, patchwork ruler is ideal for this, on top and then make sure that that ruler goes through the center lines and then you're going to use your Hera marker and you're going to run it down the fabric. So there we go, I've got that all marked up. I don't know if you can see those creases that the Hera marker has created. And that gives me a really, really long lasting guide for my quilting. So let's go straight to this. So easy when there aren't any marks to remove. And there we go. Right, let's go on to the next stage. Now I've already got my zip prepared. And what you want for this project is um, five inches of zip and then you want some zip ends at the end. I'm going to use my Clover Precision Stiletto. This is a fantastic tool to um, have in your toolbox. One end of it has a pointed end, which is brilliant for holding fabric still, maybe when you're either putting it through your sewing machine. So if you're strip piecing and you want to hold that fabric in place as you're sewing, you can do that with this end of the stiletto. And then the other end of the stiletto is a silicone tip, like a flat silicone tip. And you can use this and you can touch this with a hot iron um, when you're pressing and it's going to hold your work in place while you're pressing without singeing fingers, which is a win in my book. So to create those zip ends, I'm going to just grab a piece of fabric. This is one inch wide by five inches long and I need to press the edges in. So what I'm going to do is just flip the edge up and press it, but then I'm going to hold it down using my stiletto and I'm using the silicone end. And what this allows me to do now is I can actually get the tip of my iron right up against that and hold it in place to get a really, really precise press right where I want it to be. Flip this around. I'm just turning in about a generous quarter of an inch. I'm going to hold that in place using my silicone tip stiletto and just make sure that that's firmly pressed. Last of all, I'll fold the whole thing in half. Again, hold it down with your stiletto and press. Great if you like doing turned edge applique using an iron and starch as well. This absolutely wonderful for holding those little pieces of fabric in place or moving them around while you're working. And then all you're going to do to create your zip end using this is to slip this over the end of your zip, like this, and it covers the end of your zip really neatly. And then you're going to run that through your sewing machine. And then this extra zip, including this metal bit, which I don't want, I can just cut off. So I've already got this one prepared and I'm going to add this in to my quilted patchwork. So I have my two pieces of patchwork here. I'm going to put one down for now and I'm going to grab my lining piece of fabric. So I'm using uh, chambray here. This is my lining and I've also got my zip. So the first thing that I need to do is to place my zip right side down and the right side of a zip is the part that's got the puller on it. And I'm going to place that right side down against my patchwork. Now I need to make sure that there's an equal amount of zip end and there is extra which I'll snip off. Now when you're working with something quite thick, it might be thick fabric, it might be layers of a bag, it might be in this case um, fusible foam, you're going to struggle, I struggle, using pins, but I never struggle using Wonder Clips. So these are a great product and I think much beloved in the quilting and bag making and dressmaking community. For a little clip that I can use to hold those edges together. And they go on easily and they come off easily, which is just as important. And then I'm just going to open up the 
section and I'm going to pull that zip down just out of the way just to start with. Now it's a great idea here to change your foot to a zip foot. It makes putting on a zip much, much easier. So I'm going to sew down until I get near to the zip, towards the actual zip pull. So I can feel it now, it's about here. So I'm going to stop, lift my presser foot, move that fabric away, and I'm just now going to pull that zip right back up to the top. It's out of my way, I can carry on sewing. Again, just move those clips out of the way as you go. So all I've got to do now is sew along, keeping my needle close to the edge of the zip. and take those clips out as I get to them. Okay, so I've done my first part of my zip. And when I open that up, I've got my zip inserted inside. And I just need now to press everything back. So I'm gonna go straight back to my patchwork board. Now here, a really useful tool is this seam presser, it's a finger presser, but rather than using your finger, Clover have produced this fantastic wedge-shaped um, seam presser. This is fantastic when you've got really thick seams that you need to press down. Once that's done and I've got everything down flat, I'll just go over the top with my iron and make sure that the lining is pushed back on the wrong side or the inside of my bag and my patchwork is on the front and the zip's at the top. So if I flip that around, you can see lining and outside. So I'll top stitch close to my zip. And that's that zip inserted on one half of my humbug pouch. Now I need to repeat the process on the other side of the zip. So again, let's pull that zip halfway down Grab the patchwork first. And I'm gonna do the same as before. So I've got the right side of my zip and the right side of my patchwork are gonna face each other. I'm gonna use the first piece of the bag, the first side of the bag to line everything up. And I'm gonna start by just clipping this in place. And again, use your Clover Wonder Clips. Clover also have a fantastic mini clip so if you make things like little purses or even for patchwork too, for holding your layers together, um, they're super. Or if you're binding something small. And again, what you want here is lining to lining. So here is my lining on the inside of my bag. I've already sewn that. Here's my other piece of lining and I want to put right sides together. Now I'm going to sew that. So make sure you know where your zip pull is before you start sewing. Take out the first wonder clip and away we go. So we'll sew just until we know we're near the zip pull. I can feel it now. Lift your presser foot, lift all that out the way and pull your zip up. Press the foot down and away you go. So I can repeat this process now just as before I'm going to use my finger presser and having that fusible foam inside does create quite a thick layer. And so using the Clover finger presser really does help to get everything flattened down. You get a much, much better finish. And really, especially when you're making bags, I think, one of the things which separates homemade and handmade is the finish. So we'll just do a quick bit of top stitching. Okay, that's done. So I now have my outer bag. I've got my zip and it's fully functioning. <laughs> Check that before you move on. And then I've got my lining on the reverse side. I've still got these ends to get rid of and I'm going to use my wonderful clover scissors to do that. Okay, so I've created the front and back and the lining of my humbug pouch. It's time for me to start putting this together. Now, what I'm gonna do first of all is fold my bag in half, right side to right side. So just make sure that your two nine patches are facing one another and line up all your edges. Again, my wonder clips aren't far from me. I need those. 
Along the clear side of your wonder clips, there are some little straight markings. And these straight markings actually refer to a quarter of an inch seam allowance, three eighths of a seam allowance and half an inch seam allowance. So you can actually use your wonder clips not only to hold things together, but also to measure your seam allowance. So I've got those two sections clipped together. There they are. And this is the bottom of my bag and I'm leaving this open. So let's go straight to the sewing. Take your time when you're sewing through thick layers and allow your sewing machine to feed the fabric through nice and evenly. Another recommendation whenever I'm making a bag, I always use a needle size 100. Okay, so that's that side done. I'm gonna do exactly the same on the other side. Okay. Side seams are done. Now at this stage, we've got raw edges at the moment, which we could zigzag over, we could overlock, but I'm gonna show you a different technique for finishing those edges, which uses another favorite clover product of mine, which is the Bias Tape Maker. So the first thing that I need to do is cut a little fabric. My patchwork board has never felt more useful. and I'm gonna trim some fabric. Now what I've got right here, I've got some pretty floral fabric. If you're going to have binding, why not have beautiful binding? Let's get this cut then. So one and a half inches wide. I'll cut a little more than I need. And I'll just trim the end with my scissors. Now the other thing that I like to do is to just create a little bit of a pointed end. There we go. So this is my lead end. I'll go back to my pressing surface and I'm also going to need a clover flower head pin. Now, first of all, what you're gonna do is hold your tape maker with the metal side and there's a slot in the back. You're gonna hold that upright with the open end facing towards you. Now, this is a curved end and we're trying to put a flat piece of fabric inside. So flat plus curved is always going to be more difficult. So what we're gonna do is make our fabric curved and we're gonna do that by just pinching it between your thumb and forefinger. And now that profile is curved like my bias maker. So that will now push straight in so easily and you can already see the tip poking through. But if that doesn't happen for you, on a good day, it will. <laughs> just use your clover pin and just stroke down that center slot until that end appears and then pull. So you'll start to get your bias tape coming through the end of your tape maker. Now go to your pressing surface and press that nice and flat just to get you started off. Next, grab a pin and you want to pin the bias tape, the start of the bias tape, to your board. And then you're going to keep the edge of your iron up against the metal tip. Hold on to this part and then gently pull back on the tape maker. And keep those two edges together as you pull back. And now I've got a piece of bias tape, or straight of grain tape actually in this case, um, which I can use to bind the edges. So I've got my piece of tape here. And I'm just going to cut a strip to about the right length. And what I'm going to do is open out the tape, open out one of the folds, and I'm going to put this top raw edge against the raw edge of my fabric right here at the top. And what I need to do now is sew along a quarter of an inch. You can, if you're feeling daring, actually apply the tape while you're constructing your bag, but I like sewing, so a little extra step for me is not an issue. Now again, when you get near the top, you might want to just hand crank the last few stitches. So I've now sewn that binding. 
Now I like to trim my seam back a little bit. And again, my Clover micro serrated scissors are wonderful for this because they're gonna go through all of those thick layers so, so easily. And I'm just thinning down my seam allowance. I don't want all that bulk. Okay, perfect. And now my tape can come over the top and then cover that raw edge. And it also means that the inside of my bag looks really pretty. Now you can hand sew that down if you want to, but I'm a quilter in a hurry for some things. So I'm gonna use my clips again, my wonder clips, and I'm gonna machine sew. So that binding is now held in place and I can run this under the machine and I can top stitch that. So I'm starting at the top. So I'm just gonna do a few hand crank stitches to start me off. And then I can machine sew that binding in place. And there you can see now that my binding is neatly sewn in place. There we go. And then from the other side, it really just see a little line of stitching in the ditch. And then I'll just snip off the ends. One end is going to be hidden away in the very, very top of the bag. The bottom edge is going to be covered when I actually put my bag together. Now I'll just show you what you can do if you don't want to add a binding. You can zigzag over the edge. I've got my other raw edge on this side and I'm just gonna push this through with a zigzag. Just to capture that raw edge. And once you've done that, and the same with any dressmaking, if you zigzag your raw edges, you're sewing near, you're not trying to sew over the edge. And then you're going to trim back any loose threads and raw fabric back to your zigzag. If you try and just zigzag completely over a raw edge, you end up with a curly edge. And so you can see there, that's the zigzagged edge on one side, which still looks pretty neat, but I must admit I am rather in love with a bound edge using the Bias Tape Maker from Clover. So what I'm going to do is I've got the bottom of my bag, which is open. I've also got my zip at the top, which is open, well remembered. And I'm going to bring those two edges together. So this is what creates that triangular humbug shape. And I'm going to put my two um, either overlocked or bound edges together at the top. So you can see I've just kind of gone from flat to 3D. Okay. So clip either side of that intersection. Don't try and put a clip right over the top. There we go. So that's all starting to look like something now. Go back to my quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to sew this section. I'm going to keep everything nice and flat, especially in the centre intersection when you get to it. Okay, trim off any loose threads. And then at this point, this is where you're going to want to either bind that last edge or zigzag and trim it back. I'll leave it for now so I can do the sort of final reveal. So we've got our zip open here. We're gonna reach inside and we're gonna turn our bag through. So just push everything through to the front and push out your corners. You can use a pokey tool here. I find my precision stiletto very, very useful here to push out those corners. And while everything's still flat at the bottom like that, just give it a quick press. And then the same at the top of the bag too. You want to push out those corners. Now there's quite a lot of bulk in there. So take your time pushing those out. And you've got those little zip ends, which will help. Push that corner out, 
finger first and then you can go in with your precision tool. So you just push that corner out and you can see there at the top what a lovely nice neat finish you get. And do your zip up and there is your completed very cute little humbug pouch. All you need to do now is to decide what's going to go inside. I think my wonder clips need to go in here so that I've always got them safe and I've always got them with me whenever I want to do some sewing. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial brought to you by Stuart Hillard and Clover and I hope you'll enjoy making your little humbug pouch using Clover Notions. Thanks for joining me.